All right. Hello, everyone. Right away, I want to thank you for coming back to my channel for another video. Today, we are on to week three of the Soul Course I'm teaching at Johns Hopkins University in the fall of 2020. The course is titled Meanings to Being, Using Reading and Writing as Tools to Author the Self. Today, we're talking about the second reading in the third week. It's a short story titled The Management of Grief by Bahardi Mukherjee. I'll say briefly that this is one of the readings that's on the syllabus for the intro to fiction and poetry course that I teach each semester. And I'll also add that uh, it's not exactly one of the most uplifting stories, or maybe that's the wrong way of saying it. It's not one of the most happy stories. I say this because I think it's another valuable read for anyone who's interested in picking up some fiction. The story follows a grieving widow and mother who just lost her husband and children to a terrorist attack. But aside from just the story's main character, um, it follows a number of grieving people and in this way I think offers the reader a, a wide range of perspectives detailing how people manage grief and contend with tragedy. Like I've said in other videos, one of my goals for this course is to help you make your life better. I think one of the objective ways that we can make our life better is to familiarize ourselves with stories detailing struggles that we are likely to contend with at some point throughout our lives. And I'll pause here to say that I am obviously not suggesting that everyone is going to lose a loved one to a terrorist attack. I would. Never say that. I don't mean to imply it. Not sure how else to say it's not what I'm trying to do. What I'm saying instead is that at some point we are all going to have to say goodbye to people we love. And when that time does come, it's useful if we have some model or models to fall back on. Something that can help us process our grief. Something that can help us manage our grief. Obviously there's like an infinite number of stories that can be useful to help many of us process the tragedies that we encounter and the suffering we have to bear. The most obvious, I think, are probably religious stories. But I want to give you some idea of the value that reading fiction has to offer. I want to show you one of the many ways that I think reading fiction can enrich your life. So that's what we're doing today. We're talking about fiction. More specifically, we're talking about the management of grief. So one of the main reasons why I assigned this story is because I think it symbolically mimics something we read about in Man's Search for Meaning by Viktor Frankl. Frankl organized his book around the three stages that a prisoner in a concentration camp progressed through. The first was the prisoner's shock upon their arrival to the camp and the loss of identity that followed. And you know, I, I talked briefly about this shock in an earlier video um, where you know we did a little bit of a deep dive on uh, for the book First They Killed My Father. And so now we're moving on to the second stage. And the second stage in Frankel's book was relative apathy or some kind of emotional deadening to maybe put it more simply. And the third was depersonalization or not being able to realize what one has just been through which follows the prisoner's release from the camp. So again, in my last video, focused on two chapters from First They Killed My Father, I compared much of the material we came across to the first stage in Frankel's book, namely the idea of shock. I asked you to read The Management of Grief after First They Killed My Father because I think the management of grief can function as a, a logical progression that calls back to the stages Frankel laid out for us. In other words, I'm using a fictional example to show you how the three stages as Frankel outlined them can be applied to more scenarios than just those that take place in a concentration camp, which probably seems obvious when I say it like that, but again, I wanted to give you something that was concrete. I think there are real benefits to talking about and consequently you know, digesting these ideas. Frankel's writings strike me as foundational and archetypal, and what I think that means is that they're an extreme example of suffering. Being in a concentration camp is about as extreme an example of suffering as any you'll find. And to push that idea a bit further, I think it's an extreme example of what it means to contend and to bear your suffering. And my hope is that 
when I when I put it like that, it registers as something that can be applied to everyday experience, to your everyday life. Okay, so let's put the pieces together then. The management of grief, in my opinion, calls to mind the second stage Frankel outlined in Man's Search for Meaning, which, as I've said before, pertains to relative apathy, to emotional deadening that took place um, following the prisoner's initial admission or arrival at camp and, you know, the, the shock that followed. So in the management of grief, we follow Mrs. Bave, whose family, as I said before, has just been killed uh, in a terrorist attack. She is someone who has been changed by her grief, who has been transformed by tragedy into a new person. And we understand her behavior um, as a character, as a person, as a natural consequence of the loss of her family. But she isn't the only person that we see. We see close to a dozen characters, all of whom are processing their grief in very, very different ways. And this is the part that I want to zoom in and focus on, the vast array of approaches to the management of grief. So something is being said about how human beings manage grief in the wake of a tragedy that has shocked them. When it's severe enough, something that closely approximates a deadening of emotions occurs. A person can be overtaken by grief. Okay, so why am I telling you this? I'm telling you this in the event that something does come along that threatens to wipe you out. Life tends to throw tragedy in our faces. And even though many young people, and at least in my opinion and in my experience, many young people aren't taught to think about the management of their grief as something they can prepare for or or try to, to practice and strengthen, but I really think that it is. So with that being said, what can we learn from the management of grief? And I, I think right away, I think we can learn about human strength. And I'll add quickly that this is just my reading. I don't doubt that you could pick up this short story and arrive at a remarkably similar or different conclusion than my own. But anyways, I hope that by this point you're starting to get some idea as to why I assigned this short story. When Frankel wrote about grief, about the deadening of emotions, the context of his circumstances can make its application to our own life a bit difficult. The management of grief, at least in my opinion, offers us a lens through which we can understand how to apply Frankel's work to something that more closely resembles or approximates what we might consider everyday life, which for me is what this story is all about. Grief, I think, is something that most of us will have to contend with at some point, but everyone inevitably manages their grief differently. And this is worth pointing out because it, it contextualizes what should be done about how we move forward. Mukherjee doesn't offer a simple solution to any of the characters in this story. And in doing so, the story she builds presents its reader with somewhere around a dozen examples of people who are all managing their grief differently. And this strikes me as true to life. And it also calls back to a quote from Man's Search for Meaning that I wanna, I wanna share. So the quote is as follows, a man's suffering is similar to the behavior of gas. If a certain quantity of gas is pumped into an empty chamber, it will fill the chamber completely and evenly, no matter how big the chamber. Thus, suffering completely fills the human soul and conscious mind, no matter whether the suffering is great or little. Therefore, the size of human suffering is absolutely relative. And I say that quote because I think it kind of contextualizes how, you know, a dozen people or so could all be affected by the same tragedy, but have completely different um, ways of managing their grief. Okay, so why do I think this short story is worth reading? I think it's worth reading because it allows you to intimately observe a wide variety of people who are struggling to do the best that they can. And by the end of the story, what we find is that we love Mrs. Bave, the widowed mother and the story's protagonist. 
And that strikes me as so beautiful because it's something that can be drawn upon when you know the world feels like it's actively working against us and I'll, I'll clarify here that i don't mean to suggest that this short story will make your grief disappear you know honestly it might do the opposite but i think there's something to be said about being able to use fiction to do what i just mentioned to intimately observe human beings who are contending with problems. I think this story shows us how strong we can be. It shows us that grief is a formidable opponent that at, at least in most cases isn't easy to overcome. But the value of knowing that, I think, is that when tragedy does strike, we might not be crueler to ourselves than is absolutely necessary. We might be in a better position to understand our pain, our suffering as something that is normal, as, as something that's natural, as something that is not easy to contend with, but must be contended with nevertheless. And I think knowing those things or reminding yourself of those things is valuable. It's why I assigned the short story. I want you to be as strong as you can possibly be. And unfortunately, you know, I can't give you an antidote to grief or suffering, but what I can do is offer you a picture that might help to make your future management of grief a bit more bearable, even if only bearable by a sliver more. You know, that's really my hope, and I think that this story can do that, and that's why I've assigned it and why I really do think it, it's worth your time to read. Okay, so that's everything I've got. I wanna thank you, my wonderful viewer, for sticking with me to the end. If you found this video interesting or useful or helpful, I ask that you please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, it really helps me out, and let me know what you think in the comments section down below. Thanks again, everyone. Have a great rest of your day, and I will see you next time.